a major milestone in the evolution of 5G cellular. The FCC C-band auction has started. What does that mean? Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to talk to you about the future of 5G and particularly the C-band auction, which is underway starting December 8th. And this is an auction where the FCC is auctioning off 280 megahertz of prime juicy spectrum to enable 5G to roll out in the United States. And you're probably thinking, well, wait, wait, what's going on? Isn't 5G already rolling out? Well, indeed it is, but most of the 5G that is rolling out in the United States right now is either low band, what's uh, it's being called nationwide 5G, that is using the same frequencies and the same, you know, basically the same airwaves as 4G and just upgraded to 5G. But because it's using the same airwaves and the same, you know, basically bandwidth through the sky, this low band 5G is not really all that much better than really good 4G. It's not unlocking the potential for what 5G can deliver. And then you also have millimeter wave 5G that is rolling out in core urban areas, which is truly next generation, crazy fast, unleashes entirely new types of performance, but it is limited to incredibly short range. The sweet spot in the middle is mid-band 5G. This is the, the spectrum that has enough bandwidth to offer truly next generation speeds, but is also long range enough to penetrate into buildings and to cover ranges in miles as opposed to meters like millimeter wave. And in the United States, there is just not been much mid-band spectrum to go around. The Basically the big chunk that exists in the past has been LTE band 41, now being used as 5G band N41. That is the spectrum that T-Mobile fought so hard to acquire buying Sprint for it just to have this bastion of mid-band spectrum for 5G. But AT&T and Verizon basically have next to none of this juicy, what they call Goldilocks spectrum, the stuff that will allow 5G to be really useful. And so just like how back in uh, 2008, the FCC cleared away UHF TV channels to make space for 4G LTE to emerge, they're doing the same thing again now with what's called the C-band spectrum. This is spectrum in the th um, upper three gigahertz range that is currently used for satellite communication, but these satellite com companies are not using it particularly efficiently. So the FCC is not renewing their licenses for the spectrum, is auctioning it off for cellular. And well, that auction is started now and it is expecting to be a blockbuster with potentially over $50 billion being spent for this spectrum that will actually allow 5G to get interesting in the United States. Now, Verizon in particular is expected to be the big bidder, the big winner. Um, they're and making all the moves that analysts expect they're going to go into this auction intending to win maybe as much as 100 megahertz in key markets of spectrum. But AT&T needs more spectrum desperately as well. They're going to be bidding hard. And even T-Mobile, even though they already have mid-band spectrum and already starting to deploy on it, well, they're probably going to want to pick up some more as well. But it's not just the big three carriers bidding. Uh, um, cable companies are coming together to try and bid as well. Dish Network, which wants to build a big nationwide 5G network, wants to build as well. They're all going to be coming together to fight over this spectrum that is going to be the real foundation for 5G delivering on really truly being a next generation uh, technology. So what is happening now? Well, the auction has started. It is all happening in secret bids and everything like this. And we won't really know much more until early next year when the auction concludes, the FCC publishes the results, and the winners write their multi-multi-billion dollar checks to acquire the, lights, the spectrum in various cities. But we do know a few things. Um, first off, the, there's you know, um, 280 megahertz being auctioned off. And in 46 of the 50 biggest markets in the country, the FCC has worked out with the um, satellite incumbents an incentive. They're going to get paid billions of dollars to give up their licenses almost immediately. So that spectrum will be cleared by the end of 2021. And this is the most juicy spectrum in the C-band auction, because that means the carrier, whoever wins these 100 megahertz worth of, of channels in the 
46 biggest markets, will be able to deploy service by this time next year. You know, Verizon's already saying they've got towers ready to turn on by the end of 2021. Now, the rest of the country and the rest of the markets and the carriers who don't buy this most attractive chunks of the C-band, they have to wait until potentially the end of 2023 before the satellite incumbents have to give up their channels unless they're in persuaded with uh, in, in, in financial terms to give them up earlier one off at a time. So that spectrum is less appealing. It's going to have less of an immediate impact, um, but it is still coming by the end of 2023. And this is going to be the foundation for which 5G in the United States is really built on top of. So what does this mean in practical terms for, for you? you know, can you buy devices now that are going to be compatible with this? Um, sort of. So this spectrum is probably going to be banded as N77, LTE band, and a uh, 5G band N77. And so far, only the iPhone 12 uh, series, the 12 and the 12 Pro, are compatible with this band in the United States. Um, going forward, it seems like almost every 5G device coming out in 2021 is going to be compatible with this uh, C-band spectrum and everything that goes along with it. So if you want to be sure to be able to take advantage of what Verizon rolls out at the end of 2021 and what other carriers roll out over the, the years ahead, keep this band in mind and check for compatibility to make sure you're on top of this. And you know, all existing uh, 5G devices up until this point really aren't going to be compatible. So this is another reason why it pays to wait until, until you really need 5G and until it's really delivering true performance where you're at right now. And well, speaking of performance where you're at right now, even once the C-band starts to roll out, um, you know, Verizon and whoever wins the, the priority spectrum will be rolling it out at the end of 2021, but it's still gonna be focused on core urban areas where they absolutely desperately need more capacity. It will be rolling out more into the suburban areas pretty quickly, but it's going to take a very, very long time before the C-band matters out in the far rurals and the long range areas. Um, but it can improve coverage, it can improve things for people in those areas by taking um, demand and capacity away and funneling it off to C-band in the core areas so the rurals will have more of the long range spectrum to share. Um, so that's kind of an update. This is this is really, really big news for the future of cellular in the United States. It's opening up a ton of spectrum that is desperately needed. It's going to be what makes 5G interesting. But again, this is going to start paying dividends a year from now and three years from now. So it's fun to track. Don't jump on anything just yet, but keep your future compatibility in mind. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.